Hi, my name is Barack and I'll guide you through this tutorial of uploading your own website to the internet for free using the Amazon Web Services free tier. The AWS free tier has its advantages on the one end, such as reliable servers and commercial free usage, and has its disadvantages on the other. For example, the service is given for free for one year only and under certain conditions. A link to all of the conditions is found in the AWS website, and it will be shown later on in this video. There are a few technical details that you should know before we start. First, this tutorial is targeted at Windows operating system users. The operating system shown in this tutorial is Windows 10, though the actions performed should be similar in previous versions of Windows. Second, this tutorial consists of 8 parts and you can choose between watching them continuously or watching solely the parts that are most relevant to you. Third, in this tutorial we'll be launching a Microsoft Windows Server 2012 and after it's set up we'll install Web Server 2.5 for running our site. And last but not least, I assume you already build a website, that is, you keep HTML and PHP or other file types that you want to upload to a server. Alright, let's start. In the first part of this tutorial we'll create an AWS account so we can use the AWS free tier service. In case you already own an AWS account, you can skip to the next part. Ok, to begin with, open your browser and log into the AWS website by entering in the address bar the following address aws.amazon.com or by looking for it in your favorite search engine. For the sake of saving time, I will not read through the agreements and policies we'll bump into in this tutorial since you can do it by yourself at home. However, throughout this tutorial I'll mention links and pieces of information that are in your responsibility to read. One of them is the link of AWS free tier details, marked inside red rectangle in which you can find details about the service we're interested in called Amazon EC2. Ok, now on the right side of the page there are two yellow buttons. We're looking to create a new account and both buttons actually lead to the same page, so click on either one of them. You should also read the Terms of Use and Privacy Policy at the bottom of this page. They aren't displayed here, so scroll down in your browser. Let's proceed. Enter your real email address in the destined field and check the I am a new user option. Then click on the sign in button. In this page fill in your name in the name field. For this example I'll type first name last name. Now enter your email address once again, this time in the second email field for uses of validation, password recovery, etc. Choose a password, remember it, and write it twice in the target fields. Now click on the create account button to proceed. Here you may want to change the displayed page language to one of the available languages in the drop down menu at the upper right corner. Fill in your details in the required fields and in any other field you wish to. It is most important you'll fill in your real personal details, especially your phone number, which will be soon used to verify and complete your registration.
Also fill in the last fields and read the AWS customer agreement next to the checkbox before you check it. Afterwards, check the checkbox and click on Create Account and Continue. In this page you are requested to enter your credit card details. Well, if the service is free, then why would Amazon want my credit card details, you're asking? Good question. Well, the answer is that Amazon will charge your credit card automatically in case you exceed on purpose or unintentionally the usage limits the service has to offer. By the time this video was recorded, you wouldn't be charged if you didn't use the service for over a year and if you didn't let your server continuously run past 750 hours a month and so on. You should read the full offer details by clicking the link View Full Offer Details. These limits aren't difficult to stick to, and we'll see some more of them later on, but this is why you should read the terms of use, customer agreement, and so on. I've been using this service widely for over half a year and didn't pay a penny for it yet. Let's take a two minute break to show you my personal billings for this service. This is my personal account in AWS. I'll click on my name here and go to the billing section. Here you can see there are no charges for this month, even though I use the service. It is possible to set billing alerts in order to receive email notifications before reaching the usage limits. You can see there's nothing interesting in the payment history section. and also in the bill section. Now, let's return to where we stopped. Back at the payment information, fill what's left of this form and click on continue. In this step, choose your country code from the drop-down list to the left and make sure you typed your real phone number. Plus, make sure you can reach your phone in an instant. Click on Call Me Now and hold on for an incoming call from the US, which will sound exactly like the following. Hello, this is an automated call from Amazon Web Services. Using the touch chat on your phone, Please enter the four-digit PIN number that was displayed on your screen. You may also share your PIN one digit at a time. At the end of the speech, tap in your phone the PIN number shown in the middle of the computer screen or speak the digits one by one. Hold on a little more until the next phase automatically appears. Good. Now, click on the Continue to select your Support Plan button. Here, select the first option, Basic, and click on Continue. That is, 
unless you prefer another option which is not for free, hence requires payment. The benefits of each program are shown down this page. If you still prefer the free option, make sure you choose it and click on continue. That is all. You now own a personal account in AWS website. You can now sign in using the email address and password you registered at the beginning of this process by clicking either the sign in to the console button or the sign up button. Both redirect to the same page. In the next part we'll see how to create a server using the AWS free tier, especially the Amazon EC2 service that will be used later on to host your website. Thanks for watching.